Hello friends, uh, in this video we will compare free electron and hole. Then we will talk about the charge neutrality in silicon. After that we will just mention the concept of effective mass. That is effective mass of electron as well as hole. If you have any suggestions, use the comment section below. And subscribe and keep coming back for more videos. So let's start with the comparison. Now the conduction band electron, we may call it as a free electron because it is free in the sense that it is able to move inside the crystal freely. So we cannot say that that free electron is associated to a particular atom, but it is free to move inside the crystal. So that's why it is free. And the whole movement is considered to be occurring in the valence band that is in the bonds. And there is always some random motion associated with these charged particles. The generation as well as recombination is also random. We will discuss about it, about the generation rate and recombination rate later. And electrons have higher mobility compared to holes. So just consider mobility as the ability to move. So the ability to move, we call it as mobility. So we will have a discussion about it when we talk about drift current in semiconductors. Now electron experiences less interaction compared to holes. So external interactions are really less in the case of electron compared to hole. In a electrons obviously will have more energy because we have seen that when we plot the energy diagram we have valence band and above we had conduction band. So conduction band electron we call it as free electron and hence they are supposed to have higher energy compared to hole. So free electrons move in the conduction band, we can assume that it is moving in the conduction band and holes move in the valence band. So electrons have negative charge and holes have positive charge. The free electron the charge is minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb and that of hole is plus 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs. So let's consider a silicon crystal having n silicon atoms. In a single silicon atom, we have 14 electrons and 14 protons. So in n silicon atom, we will be having 14 n electrons and 14 n protons. Now we know that now the charge of an electron is negative and that of proton is positive and their magnitudes are equal. Now we can say that silicon crystal is electrically neutral or charge neutral. Now the real question is does the silicon crystal will have some charge after the creation of an electron hole pair. So let's say this bond break and an electron came out of the bond. Now a hole is created. So now we have a hole here and electron outside the bond that is within the crystal but outside the bond we have generated a free electron and a hole and the silicon atom here have gained positive charge okay the silicon atom had positive charge but the silicon crystal is still charge neutral it is true that this silicon atom have a positive charge but at the same time there is an electron within the same crystal which is having equal and opposite charge we can definitely say that the silicon crystal is still charge neutral. It do not have a positive charge or negative charge as a whole. Now we will see the concept of effective mass. So we won't be discussing about effective mass concept in detail at this point of time. All I am trying to do is mention about effective mass so that in the coming discussions it will be easier for you to understand or follow along in the coming discussions. Mass of an electron or the actual mass of an electron is measured in vacuum. But in a crystal, but in an actual silicon crystal or in any semiconductor material, they experience multiple forces. They experience internal as well as external forces. So it should show some difference from actual mass of the electron due to these forces. And it varies with the material we are talking about and it also varies with the energy band where we are looking. So in order to accommodate these forces, we encapsulate those information into the concept of effective mass. Instead of dealing with these internal and external forces, 
every time we do calculation we what we do is we summarize that information into a concept of effective mass it accounts for these interactions uh, that are experienced by electrons or holes in the crystal and we know that electrons and holes experience different set of forces they are in two energy levels right one is in conduction band other is in valence band so the effective mass of electron we use the notation mn followed by a star so this is the notation we use for effective mass of electron here the suffix n represents negative charge and star represents that this is not actual mass of electron but the effective mass now for hole we use mp star where p stands for the positive charge of hole and that is the effective mass of hole so in the case of in the calculations of charge transport and calculations involving mass of charge carriers will be using effective mass instead of actual mass in order to calculate the effective mass you need to understand about the energy band structure of that particular material we won't be discussing much at this point of time all we need to know is that we cannot use actual mass of electron which we assume that it is measured in va vacuum but instead we need to account for the internal and external forces that an electron or hole experience in the crystal so we encapsulate that information into the concept of effective mass some point of time i will make another video which explains in detail the energy band structure the actual energy band structure of silicon and how we can compute the effective mass and one more point which is worth noting is that the effective mass of hole that is mp star is greater than that of electron this is obvious because uh, the electron the free electron we were talking about will have more energy compared to hole and they experience less interaction so their effective mass is small on the other hand holes experience much more interaction with the crystal lattice and its effective mass is higher